The man who broke the news. Hello, Woj. Let's start with Commissioner Silver and all that he's been Thank pondering uh, for so many months now, the best way to restart the season. So how did he land on this proposal, Adrian? Hey, Sage, when you look at the number of teams, I think especially 21 and 22, Phoenix and Washington in the East, you were right on the cusp of teams who could make any kind of a case that they still had enough time and enough games left to make a push to get in the playoffs. There were more teams who wanted to participate. They didn't make it. And then the eight regular season games that teams are going to play, number one, it gives players uh, a chance to be paid for more uh, of their contracts this season, but also for teams to, to reclaim the money uh, from their regional sports network deals, uh, getting a magic number for a lot of those teams and their contracts with their regional providers is 70 games. It gets those teams above that. And the whole play-in concept is, you know, one owner said to me, it was really our most compelling uh, potential for theater and drama. And, and that's what the NBA uh, hopes they're going to have here is a product this summer uh, that can be compelling and pulls people back into the league. The season is over for eight teams, Woj. What has the reaction been from those teams? Listen, several, there are several teams that are very disappointed that they can't play, not only because they wanted to be a part of the NBA's restart, they want to feel like they're still part of the league with everybody going to Orlando, but especially teams who are rebuilding and have younger rosters. Atlanta, you know, Charlotte, Detroit, they wanted to have their players in the gym. They want training camps. And these are among the teams who have already started to talk to the NBA about having some kind of uh, mini camps, training camps, maybe even regional games against other teams and kind of a fall league format that's going to be discussed in this offseason. They are very concerned about going from March until potentially late December without playing games and without really having access to their players, but that's going to have to be negotiated with the Players Association, but a lot of concern, you know, those in organizations who are left behind from the basketball point of view and also from a business point of view, yeah. being out of being out of uh, sight and mind in their marketplaces for that long. As far as testing, Woj, how do they plan to test these players for COVID-19? Uh, Sage, uh, consistent, regular testing almost on a daily basis with players is expected to be the plan. And part of the reason they're in Orlando and on that campus environment at Disney is players and coaches and they'll be able to move around. They don't have to stay in their hotel rooms. They can go to dinner. Uh, they could go play golf. But social distancing is going to continue to be a part uh, of this restart. And the only time they want people together is on the court. And you may see social distancing on benches and uh, in conversations with people. That's not going to change, even though everybody will be regularly tested within that bubble environment. Woj, thank you. Kevin, keep it going. So what about this? What will the league do for the top teams now that there's no home court advantage? One idea is to give the higher seed possession to start the second and third and fourth quarters. These are being discussed by team executives per Dave McMenamin. How about designating one player to be allowed seven fouls before fouling out or adding an extra coaches challenge or want a real home court advantage? What about literally bringing your home court? Yeah, your own hardwood to Orlando. High seeded teams getting top hotel choice is also a possibility. Speaking Speaking of hive seeds, Bucks head coach Mike Budenholzer, his team holds the best record in the league. His reaction. I've been just so hoping that we actually play the games. I'm not, I don't care if they even give us the home court advantage. I'm like, just be sure we play. I don't care what they do. Yeah, sure. Great. Give us an extra timeout. Give us an extra possession. Give, whatever. Whatever the ideas are, it's all. I'm all for it. I'm just being honest with you guys. I just hope we play, and it feels like we are going to play. You know, if there's nothing, there's nothing. It's you know, the best team will win, and and that's you know, I think what we all look for. We continue our coverage of the NBA's planned return with Brian Windhorse. Wendy, what are the chances that the higher seeded teams could receive some sort of incentives now that home court advantage is now taken away from them? Next to zero. Um, there is just very little chance that. Uh, the required votes are going to happen to uh, do anything within the 48 minutes and the four lines. Now, there could be things that have value to the top seats, such as preferred practice court times, because 
You don't have facilities, you have to share everything. You could pick your uniforms, but they're not gonna alter the gameplay. Um, you know, I think it's important to point out that even somebody discussing the idea of bringing your own hardwood court in completely shows how out of touch some people are about the number, about safety being number one. You, you have to limit the amount of people that are in the building. This is something that I think I'm already seeing people in the league forget. You got to protect that bubble. So yeah, you may not get to sleep at the Four Seasons. You may have to sleep at a four-star hotel instead of a five-star hotel because they're trying to get you a building that can be the most safe as possible. That's something that's gonna be hard for some people in this to come to an understanding, but they're gonna learn pretty quick. Okay, what else lies ahead as concerns for the league to push forward and, and return successfully here? Yeah, one of the things I think you're going to hear a lot from, especially when the fans actually see it and they take a look how their teams line up, is what the schedules are going to be. Um, you're not going to be able to play your, your next eight games on your schedule because eight of the teams have been eliminated. And there's also a possibility, especially in the East, that you're not going to have eight games to play because you're only bringing nine teams in. So the NBA is, from what I am told, is going to use your remaining schedule as a basis. It may, be, it may resemble what you are going to play as you get there for the eight games, but there are going to have to be some things that are inserted and changed. And that's going to be a factor because, Kevin, if you have 13 teams in the West and you're only playing eight games, you don't have to be a math major to realize it's not going to be a balanced schedule. And just across the board, I'm, I'm going to say this. Fans are going to have to realize and teams are going to have to realize that not everything is going to be fair. Not everything is going to be square. There are certain advantages you're going to lose by going into this. Other teams are going to get bonuses that you don't get. Guess what? This is the best that we have. The league worked really hard on this. They'll continue to work hard on it over the next two months to get ready. This is the best we have. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.